What's up, guys? Here with you with FC Wonder Kid, episode 40. Here with my guy, Brenton. How are you? 40, man. 40. Isn't that like, aren't you over the hill when you hit 40? <laughs> um, it, it's amazing that it's been 40 weeks, but I'm doing good. I'm a little nervous. It's a World Cup qualifying week for the U.S. men's national team. We've got three games coming up in the next two weeks. So, uh... We're going to know whether or not we qualify or not, probably by the end of this window. But man, oh man, am I nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's between Canada, Mexico, and U.S. Yeah, so the way it works is top three make it automatically, fourth go into a playoff. Um, you know, we're, we're, doing, we're doing okay right now. We're doing okay, but we could be doing better. Uh, we've got two home games and a game away against Canada. Unfortunately, Canada will be without Alfonso Davies. Ooh. So we'll see, but we're going to be still without Gio Reyna and, you know, some big key pieces. But, hey, I'm excited. Um, there is so much to talk about. We got, what, AFCON on the docket. We've got uh, a bunch of Wonder Kids in the news, a whole bunch of Wonder Kids in the news, <laughs> transfers. And then we're going to hit some quick fires at the end. Is that right? Yes, just some quick <laughs> fire questions, putting you and me on the spot and getting those clips. That people love it, love to see it. So starting off the general news, I wanted to mention something that I was, I was thinking to myself, I can't believe it. I cannot believe that I'm seeing news that yeah. Mario Balotelli, Super <laughs> Mario, is back at the Azuri. And yeah. unbelievable. Great choice by Mancini, in my, in my opinion, because you have Immobile. And then, yep. like, the bench is so... Mm, like, it lacks the sauce. And Balotelli... <laughs> Brings it, okay? And he's playing quite well in Turkey. I don't know if you guys uh, have, have been watching watching him because I wasn't paying too much attention on him. But yeah. then I see the stats with 15 starts, 8 goals, 3 assists. The team yeah. is like came up to the first division. They're top 5. Like, in, 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 Oh my day. So Balotelli isn't at all not informed people. So Roberto yeah. Mancini? I'll be honest. I thought his career, I thought Mario Balotelli's career was over when he went down to Serie B. Mm -hmm. um, I know Monza in Serie B has, you know, they have ambitions for Serie A and a Portuguese guy, what, Dani Mota? He's mm. been killing it for them for a while. Yes. But yeah, his, his loan to Adana Demirspor kind of surprised me. Uh, and I would have just guessed that that would never open up another avenue to the Azuri. But uh, here we are. Here we are, Mario Balotelli. I, I, I had to double check his stats because the guy that's impressed me on Demir Spor has been Yunus Ak Akbun, Akun. Mm -hmm. Um and uh, apparently he's had, you know, he's got a bunch of an, uh, a bunch of assists and a lot of those have gone to Mario Balotelli. So they're like top 3 in the Super League and and killing it right now. So hey, you you said it right at the beginning. Mario Balotelli always brings the sauce and uh, we'll <laughs> see if the sauce translates to goals again or if it's just kind of like a way to shake up the Azuri before they uh, take on a certain potentially a certain Portuguese team uh, where they're <laughs> going to need all the sauce they're going to need to get by them so oh, yeah that's great. potentially and even though if like they, we, they don't get us like Portugal yeah. they'll get Turkey and he knows Turkey so Balotelli like good True. good snatch up man so good times for Balotelli but Let's go on in a bit of a negative now, okay? But for 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 a couple of fans, it can be a negative or a positive because yesterday night it was really good for Atletico in terms of what happened. Like it was unbelievable the comeback against Valencia. But like Atletico's having a tough time right now. And yeah, yeah. the truth is they have been eliminated from Copa del Rey. They lost 2-1 yep. to Atletico Bilbao in the semifinals of the Super Cup. Yep. And now they're 13 points behind Real Madrid. Man, yep. Simeone is on the spot. And I know, yes, he, they were all celebrating, saying this is Atleti, this is Atleti. But Atletico, like no Lionel Messi at Barcelona, no right. Sergio Ramos at Real Madrid. Every Atletico fan was saying, now it's <laughs> our time. We have no, mm -hmm. the big dogs are gone. No, it isn't. And this is a problem. Rebuild needs to happen at Atletico de Madrid. I mean, it, it probably does. I, I'll be honest. I would have thought like a Rodrigo de Paul. I would have oh. thought like 
this I, I would have thought they would have been playing a little more cohesively because like mm-hmm. these are team players. But yeah, that was going to be one of my quick fires. Um, probably still should be, even though they did come back, pulled a Tottenham, and uh, scored two in injury time uh, to win. Do you feel like Atletico Madrid, regardless of you know if there's positive momentum heading into the end of the La Liga season, or mm-hmm. even if they surprise again in the Champions League, or surprise in the Champions League, not surprise again, mm-hmm. um, do you feel like it's time to you know turn over a new page and and let Diego Simeone go? I I I I, I, I it's hard to say yes because it's yeah. something that's been so long. But sure. in my opinion, the replacement is Marcelo Gallardo, okay, with the same case scenario that Simeone came to Atletico. Yeah. And I know Gallardo loves the youth, so and I'd love to see Me- Simeone in the Prem. Or mm. I think he fits the bill more to go to Serie A, but I would love yeah. to see Simeone in the Prem next to Guardiola, Tuchel. You know, it, it, would, it would solidify his name in the best coaches in the world scenario yeah. because... You could have. He was the. Um, I think for two years, Simeone was the world's most well-paid manager in the yeah. world. So, yeah. so like he needs to be the top of the top. So, and another thing with Simeone that I gotta judge him, especially as a Portuguese person, man, is the João mm-hmm. Felix situation. And sure. contract right now of João Felix is until 2026. And yeah. if it re- if it remains, if he stays at Atletico until he mm-hmm. ends up his contract. He's 26 years old. And I'll be honest with you, if if Jean Felix is at Atletico until he's 26, his career's over, man. <laughs> okay? When I say his oh. career's over, is the expectations that I had from him to be yeah. a top player in the Portuguese national team, to be on the dot, on the dot, on top, it just won't happen, man. It just no. won't happen. He needs to leave now. He needs to leave this summer because he needs it. 22, the confidence you just can see is not the same. And Atletico fans, I think they know it. Because when he got subbed off, mm-hmm. João Felix wa- got cheers by the fans. And Simeone yeah. was getting booed. Booed, okay? Yeah. So that says a lot. 26 years old, he can't be at Atletico by that time. Brenton. I'm sorry, no. he can't. Well... I mean, unless unless obviously things change, but that's you know Diego Simeone obviously um, has done things so right at Atletico to get them from a mid-table La Liga team perennially to being a La Liga challenger almost mm-hmm. every year, and and what two La Liga titles uh, against some very strong Real Madrid and, and Barcelona opposition. Mm-hmm. Um, so like yeah amazing obviously we've talked about him you know does he count as being up there as uh, upper echelon but yeah he has some weird things with certain players and uh you know Luis Suarez obviously I understand he's at the end of his career but he's not looking Mm -hmm. the same he's not looking the same um and uh Mateus Cunha who they brought in for what we thought was just this bargain bargain deal yes um hasn't really played much until late I mean, if Whoa. you don't have Matias Cunha on the pitch yesterday, mm-hmm. that that comeback would not have happened. That comeback would not have happened. He is such a good player. He needed 41 minutes, right? It was like 41 minutes, one goal, one assist. That's yep. what you he needed, needed man. That. Yeah. Oh. So I'm with you. I'm with you. I think there's certain things that I don't I don't know that aren't going to change with Simeone, and and maybe that's the dinosaur uh, in him, or or just the. I don't know. These days, I feel like things change so fast mm-hmm. with coaches. Like I, I'm, I know they get paid very well, right? But I'm almost, uh, I almost feel bad for some of these coaches because it, it just seems like things are changing so fast. I mean, in our whole world. Exactly. So yeah, Atletico is something I'm going to have to, we're going to have to watch a whole lot sooner. But I'm with you. João Felix needs to get out. He has to get out. Um, and. The talk with the coaches is it's cheaper to, to sell out a coach and then sell out the whole team. So, well, like, yeah. the problems you get to sell that player, that player, that player. Oh, my day. So, I think we could change topics to something that is looking on the up, up, upscale and things. Yeah. And that is Man United, okay? Because times at Man United are looking much better. And the reason why is simple. Simple. Ralph Ragnick, okay? And I do think people might say, oh, you're so Ronaldo biased, but 
I find it interesting after an interview from Ronaldo saying that mm-hmm. there the needs to be more discipline. The kids need to listen more. There needs to be a more encouragement and needs to be more motivation. Who mm-hmm. is the player that is coming up the ranks now? Elanga. Yeah. Anthony Elanga. And the common trait that every Man United player speaks about Elanga says, Elanga is such a hard worker. Elanga yeah. works is works so much and seeing him get the recognition after that interview of Ronaldo and seeing that Ralph Ragnick is stepping up and putting him in the games man I love to see it and I'm happy that everything is happening now because Ralph Ragnick puts Elang on the pitch isn't afraid to drop big names changes mm-hmm. the style of play fully and plays in a 4-3-3 bets yep. on Duke Dalo, which I love it and Alex yep. Delch yep wow Wow, all yeah. the right choices in my view. And get Maguire yeah. out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's happening anytime oh. soon. But but yeah, Diogo, Diogo Dalo, I mean, that that he has he has gone from this might be like the fastest rise from bench potential on his way out mm-hmm. of Old Trafford to becoming a vital player for them. Right? Mm-hmm. I mean, he didn't he wasn't on the he didn't assist, he didn't have a goal the other day, but he was still big. Yes. Uh, in terms of poking, prodding that that West Ham defense, uh, also solid on defense. Uh, I, I love it. I love it. And you're right. Like Anthony Alanga, um, we've we've often talked about. Everyone's always asked us, you know, mm-hmm. who in the United, who in the United Youth Academy are you watching? Are you watching? Are you watching? And mm-hmm. Alanga has always been on the tip of our tongue, and it's mm-hmm. just like, but we never have been able to find. How does he make his way through? Yes. Right. How did he make his way through? Well, Ralph Rangnick. That's how he makes his <laughs> way through. And, and putting your head down and working your working your butt off, yeah. Um, so that when the time comes, your name is called. And and you forgot one tenet of Ralph Rangnick that is very different mm. than others. He actually took Cristiano Ronaldo out of the game, right? And Cristiano Ronaldo, understandably, was not happy about it. Okay, <laughs> he may understand the justification for why he did it. But he was not happy about it, rightfully so. Yes. But the fact that Ralph Rangnick is not looking at uh, at Cristiano Ronaldo and saying that he has to like price in his Instagram followers or price in his reputation Aww. or price in whatever. Um, this isn't a negative against Ronaldo. It's just it's a true fact, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I thought that that was encouraging when it was trying trying to get Ronaldo to look towards the future, right? Trying to get him to move forward because in the end, who was it that wound up scoring the goal? You know, it was one of the young kids that he put in. It was, yeah, Rashford. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, Marcus Rashford now is a super sub. Like it. I, it kind of makes a little more sense based on what he's been through over the last 18 months. But, yeah, you know, Manchester United is ebbing and flowing right now. Right now they're they're, they're on the up. Mm-hmm. They're clearly in the top four, top three, uh, potentially, uh, conversation if they mm-hmm. can keep this running. But that's going to be the biggest question is consistency. Well, um, well Ronaldo yeah. obviously wasn't happy about the substitution. I agree. Uh, yeah. But what I liked about it was Ralph Ragnick went to speak to him. They had a chat mm-hmm. between each yeah. other. And like you could see like Ronaldo seemed annoyed, but he respected his opinion in which yeah. I understand that. And going with the Duke the Law talk, man, I got to say he's got eight starts, six yeah. wins. Four mm-hmm. clean sheets. So mm-hmm. the impact is clear as day. And you know it. Okay, so uh, yeah, I, I'm liking what I'm seeing with Man United overall in general, man. It needs, it needs, it needed to happen. This, everything that's happening, it needed to happen. The CDM still yeah. is something that I expect fully this summer. And yeah, it, it, and the people that I got to judge is Bisaka, man, right now, okay? Mm-hmm. It seems like Bisaka, like Dalo. Giving the what what was needed for it, like the passing option that was needed for it, changed the whole game for Man United, man. And it was definitely necessary. And good times are definitely ahead, in my opinion. In my yeah. opinion. I, I hope so, because um, remember, we talked about this being a, one of the most competitive years in the Premier League, uh, and it so far is not. Manchester City just and keeps doing Manchester City things, although Southampton held them to a draw recently. Um, and but, I gotta yeah. say this too, sorry. And the fact that Elanga yeah. is playing so well, like who yeah. must be on the spot is Jaden Sancho. Of course. Jaden Sancho, man, coming for the feet that he's coming in. Like, yeah. how does how does he justify this now? Like yeah. oh 
So There's only one way to justify it. Put your head down and uh, make sure that you're ready to make an impact when Ralph Ragnick calls your name. Uh, there's no there, there's no other way to get back in the 11 right in the, in the <laughs> it's hard um, but it's hard oh. it is hard but yeah uh it's it is it is refreshing to see alanga get his chance and i don't know i don't know what that means for maybe later in the season if there are other blow-ups mm-hmm. uh will uh will a will a hannibal mejbri uh get his name called Ooh. or a, a shola shoratire um i like I, that one yeah we'll see we'll see but uh, um you saw that. I know we just talked about Atletico Madrid. You saw that Tottenham comeback, right? Uh, that Tottenham versus Leicester midweek. Yes. Berg um, like, wow. won. Um, here's what I love, though, about that Berg, Bergvine, um, you know, brace is he has been the subject of obviously leaving Tottenham. He has been the subject of transfer rumors uh, heading back on loan to the Eredivisie. Mm-hmm. And I just love that he got his shot and um, – what was it 95th minute he equalizes 97th minute he puts them ahead and our boy Yori Tielemans is the guy that essentially gives him um yeah. the chance to do so and it was just so uncharacteristic of him it it, it made me hurt and smile at the same time because we love Tielemans and watching him do something like that in midfield was ugh um but then even Bergvine getting his uh, getting his chance and putting it away that was great, and that, that's something like you're seeing some of these teams that were flagging at the beginning of the year mm-hmm. um, really starting to hopefully develop an identity again and 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 move along its way. But well, uh, it's t- one result, so we'll see what happens. Well, Tottenham one- definitely looked different, man. And the fa- what yeah. I loved about that match was th- yeah. the celebration at the end. You know, yeah. something that I, I, I often do judge Arsenal fans a lot, but... Arsenal, I feel like even when they're in the mud or when they're yeah. succeeding, they're all together. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And Tottenham, yeah. when they're not succeeding, I feel like everybody's just bashing everyone. Just boom, boom, boom. And seeing everyone happy as a collective, it was like there's something here beautiful that can happen. And Conte seeing it. <laughs> yeah. You're giving the man that is obsessed with yeah. wins a, a big win. So... I'm hyped for Tottenham because I'm not going to judge Conte until the summer. And I do think every Tottenham fan needs to needs to be thinking like this. Because let him get who he wants. Because sure. forwards, you're lacking a player. Clearly, it's not La Celso, man. And come on, no. Bergvine is coming off the bench. But you definitely need someone. A Dybala, uh, Adama Traore could add something else. But you need a Dybala level player. Uh Someone force that is a knockout, a knockout, yeah. you know, and yeah. yeah, Conte will get it, guys. So let's see what happens. <laughs> yeah. and, and and the next team that needs this this type of a makeover that's currently happening, hopefully at Spurs and, mm. and had been happening at Arsenal and is happening at Man United, uh, Everton, man. Oh, Everton. It's just, I mean, they. This is one of those situations <laughs> where a few more bad decisions or a few more like deflated souls. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and the toffees could wind up in the relegation zone. Like it's not out of the question that they don't survive this season as a premier league team. Um, the as somebody that grew up loving Everton because Timmy Howard was there and Landon Donovan went on some loans and blah, blah, blah. Um, it's someone growing up, like really having a soft spot for Everton, Timmy Cahill, you know, oh, hitting yeah. the, hitting the corner post. Um, you Jack hate to Yelka. see it. Oh. Yes. But this, this managerial, this managerial um, decision mm-hmm. has to happen and, and they have to get it right. They have to get it right. Um, and yeah. just seeing like, how much do you think that that hurt? And I'm sorry to make Everton fans listening to this, relive this, but how much do you think that hurt when they lost to Villa and Steven Gerrard was like walking off the pitch yeah. with this smirk on his face, like just knowing. And I, it's really hard to make Steven Gerrard seem unlikable, but like he was walking off the pitch, like knowing what he was doing to the Everton fan base. So uh, they really, really, I hope they get it right. I don't know. I mean, the right choice is is who brings the soul of the club back. Hmm. And. I don't I know. know who you're lead- ah, yes, you do. Yes, you do. You, I know who you're leading up to. Yes, you know, do. Man. No, yes, I. You're not gonna say it. You're saying no, Rooney, I, you my know, guy. <laughs> yeah, I mean Wayne. Wayne Rooney. Wayne Rooney would be great just based on what he's been doing with um 
with with Darby and obviously limited resources and almost mm-hmm. the doomed the doomed case of Darby County uh, in the championship. But at the same time, he doesn't have obviously managerial pedigree. Mm-hmm. But neither does anyone else that they're really looking at right now. Like looking at Hart. Apparently, they've already interviewed Frank Lampard, okay. right? Okay. And they're going to interview him again. Um, but like, yeah, I mean, Frank Lampard obviously wasn't exactly unsuccessful with Chelsea, but he wasn't successful yeah. enough with the top tier team. Exactly. You give him some time to maybe build Everton back up. Um, I'm going he, Rooney. I'm going could Rooney. Work out. I'm going yeah. Rooney. You know why? Because imagine Rooney in That's that boring. locker room, man. And Dominic oh, Calvert Lewin saying, I'm having a soft day. Rooney's just looking at him. What? Yeah, no. Get the hell <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> What do you mean, well, my guy? And I gotta say, it, it, it is really nice to see Calvert Lewin. I mean, he didn't have a great game, but it's nice to see him at least back and healthy because mm. he's been out a while for them. True. Um, True. But, but they like literally when when the best player on the pitch is someone that's not scoring much. Like Anthony Gordon is wearing his heart on his sleeve, running his butt off, uh, trying to trying to get this team some sort of a um, a result. And I just don't know. I don't know what you do in this situation, but I'll tell you something like for me, for looking more from the outside, looking and seeing that they were interested in Matej Nunes last mm-hmm. summer, they were interested in Luis Diaz. Like, I'll just say this. If they had gotten these two players, Everton would be easily in the top 10. OK, I just want to say that because, okay. the, yeah, this it's what you said. Decisions like decisions. Yeah. They're so close to make those decisions. And I think Rooney. I really have a good feeling with Rooney at Everton, man. I really, yeah. I yeah. There is that. There's that. Um, like Zidane has that arrogance and confidence that you wouldn't mess with him at Real. Sure. I think Rooney would have that at Everton. <laughs> that, that je ne sais quoi. Yes. Yeah, Rooney. Rooney is. Uh, he's. I don't know. He. He's somebody that you know deeply cares, but also sometimes looks like he just doesn't. He's too. I, he's nonchalant. Right, he's nonchalant about it. Um, I but yeah, I mean, who better to bring back than the guy you gave a debut at what, fifteen or sixteen years old? Exactly. Um, Very different from Stevie G, man. And I loved how you mentioned the, the smirk. And, and I find it interesting too. Digne scored, right? Like, uh, like he, uh, he assisted. He assisted. So yeah. assisted. So Lucas Digne assisting. Like, yeah. what? This is yeah. that is such like for Everton fans. It's it's not good. It's not. Good, but I wanted to say in the Aston Villa side, I have to mention this, Coutinho. Coutinho, yeah. man, is balling, and I absolutely love to see it, and I'm hyped to see Stevie G now there, Digne yeah. now there, the transfers that might come in that we're going to talk more ahead. Like, Stevie sure. G is changing this, okay? Villa has the money, true. Okay, it has to be said too, because, yeah, yeah they, just having the, the cash flow makes it different, but... There is a good project there. And I saw a, a Bombahor saying he, <laughs> players should prefer to sign for Villa than Man United. I think that's a bit too much. Okay. But for the project wise, I understand though. But yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, the common denominator here though is it is Stevie G. It is yeah. Steven Gerrard and uh, the name and, and the, the respect. And, and we have to remember, like, he went to a Rangers team, mm-hmm. right? That, that, I'm not going to say they were in the mud. They were already somewhat out of the mud mm. uh, from their 10 years of discontent, if that's mm. even a word. Uh, it took them a while to get back, but Rangers gave them, or, I'm sorry, um, Gerard gave them a, an identity again, and uh, he, he plucked guys like Ryan Kent, Joe Aribo. He yes. plucked kids that just had, you know, this fire in their belly uh, right. and, and made them perform for him. And, um, I, he's going to do the same with Villa, and I think he's also got that added edge of being a Premier League legend mm-hmm. uh, that will be able to contain the egos if there are egos. I don't know. I'm just assuming big price tag comes with an <laughs> ego. I have no clue. Yes. But he'll be able to contain the Coutinho's, right, mm-hmm. um, of the world. So I I like it. I like it. Um, and, and Morelos too, man, at Rangers. Like, that was – it was yeah. the, the, a great fit. That's true. Great yeah. fits, great fits. So I'm going to talk more about the team that is on a, a competition to Villa. And you know who I'm going to talk about. The Portuguese yeah. team in the front. It's Wolves. <laughs> and just like the Stevie G impact, I got to say it. The Brunelage impact, it's noticeable. Because yeah. Wolves have, uh, in their last six games, 
five wins, uh, mm-hmm. five wins and one draw, okay? And 10 goals scored and two suffered. The Bruno Lage impact is here, man. And I'm hyped. Yep. Eighth in the league, four points to get to the Champions League. Rubanev yep. is playing much better. João Moutinho is playing much better. Gilman, like, playing so so much better in defense, too. Yeah. Like, the whole yeah. team is... Oh, it's it's improving a lot. Even Adama Traore, man, is the super sub, the gift that keeps on giving. It's still giving, man. And Laj is just putting the pieces all moving tremendously well. And the player that I'm most excited with, Brun Laj, yes, he's not scoring, but I expect yeah. to see something different from him. And it's Fabio Silva, pessoal. Well, Fabio yeah. Silva is coming. Ele vem aí. And guys, expect to see him. And he's getting more and more playing time. And the goals are going to come. Bora, bora, yeah. Fabio. Bora, bora. Uh, uh, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm with you on this, uh, on this Wolves love. Uh, because they, <laughs> they have such a, uh, I, I guess I'll call it like a blue-collar blue collar defense, mm-hmm. right? Connor Cody and you've got Max Kilman, And you've got these guys that like you don't look at on paper and say, oh, man, I need them in my team. And yet he's got them. He's got them rolling. He's mm-hmm. got them protecting Jose Sa. And then, of course, when you've got Jose Sa <laughs> back right now, doing what he's doing, standing on his head uh, a lot of the games. Um, and you have a very underrated midfield that has worked together in mm-hmm. the Portuguese duo of Neves and Moutinho. Um, it's it is. It's fun. But even more impressive, I thought, was to sign. Is it Toti or Tati? Uh, Which, to, uh, Totti. Uh, the Totti. center. The, no, he came from Zurich, but yeah. Chiquinho. We signed Chiquinho from Sturil, like Wolves. Right. And Totti, yeah. Totti was already even there. He was on loan from Zurich. Great player. Right. Okay. Great. Well, just just to give him that chance, right? Sheesh. Just to put him in that that uh you know that other that third center back role, mm-hmm. um, and them to get that that. That result, uh, they're now up, I believe they're what, top half? They're fighting. They're only they're only two points behind Arsenal in sixth. Um, and they've got a couple games in hand to West Ham, and they're three points behind them in fifth. I'm hot. This is oh. I, I love it. I love no it. Like huh? and, 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 and for me, it, it it does answer a lot of doubts. Like I think even for people that watch Portuguese ball, like Bruno Lage yeah. left Benfica. Uh, bad. It wasn't. Uh, it wasn't the best. And yeah. for me, I think Bruno Lage is saying Befica uh, succeeded. I had an impact on that, guys. Okay. And Felix, Jean Felix became a world class player, like uh, in a given moment in form, because mm-hmm. I was playing him in the right style of play. So sure. big credit to Bruno Lage, man. And yeah. I'm loving it. And that's why, people, watch out for Fabio Silva. That's why I believe something's going to happen. I, I wow. believe- we got a lot here in the news, man. But yeah. we got to talk about the competitions like AFCON. AFCON. Yeah. Yeah. Let's not forget about that. We, got, we can't forget about AFCON. And I want to start Hard AFCON to. with Abu Bakar. Okay? Yeah. We got to start uh-huh. with the best player in the knockout stages, Abu Bakar. He deserved it. The captain, yep. exactly. <laughs> the captain for sure, exactly. And yeah, for him, lovely, fantastic to see, fantastic to see. Abu Bakr. It is, and, and and they have a they. I mean, all credit to the Comoros. I think I said that right. The Comoros Islands, uh, for making it into the knockout round. But that's who Cameroon has next. So I I would expect Abu Bakr to uh, add to his goal haul <laughs> of five goals. Um, but yeah, nah, he's been a major, major catalyst for them. And obviously they got, you know, Carl Toko Akambe, um, mm-hmm. behind him in that sense. Like if Abu Bakar is misfiring one day, Akambe is going to get it, but I don't know. I, I, I haven't yet, I haven't yet said to myself that I believe Cameroon's going to make it to the final. I do feel like once Cameroon kind of hits, a, mm-hmm. a a bigger, a bigger squad. Okay. Um, I, I do feel like maybe they, yeah, they get, they get trounced. Um, Senegal, I think is kind of the sleeping giant right now. They mm-hmm. haven't looked good at all, but they made it through. Um, mm-hmm. so I really do feel like that's coming, but man, Vincent Abubakar has been great. And you know who else has been great under the pressure to be great? Because this I- is a tournament. We have to remember, we have to say it right now. This is a tournament that you and I both said Algeria. We can't really see Algeria not winning this thing or getting far. Man, yeah, they're out. They're gone. Ivory they're- Coast, man. Like 
battered yeah. those guys, man. Like, yeah. oh. It, and Riyad Mahrez, like, I don't know if he even showed up. Um, <laughs> he had the chance. He had the chance to give them a lifeline, and I believe he missed the penalty. He hit the post or yes, something. Yes, he did. Uh, I saw that. Oh, like Algeria has four goals conceded, one yeah. point, and one goal. Like, what disappointed me watching Algeria's games was Mares yeah. was zero involved. And yeah. I, I, I was honestly doubting if it was the tactics of the coach saying to him yeah. to spread to the wide or it was yeah. himself. So I don't know, but it's a pity to see Algeria. And I got to say too, Ghana. Ghana is out too of the AFCON, man. And yeah, yeah. another t another oh. big team. But Ivory yeah. Coast. Woo! Yeah. Well, 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 hold on. Before we get to the Ivory Coast, can we stick on Ghana for one second? For because sure. how bad was Thomas Partey's yeah. week? How bad was Thomas Partey's week? I almost feel bad saying it because the poor guy before he went to AFCON was, was getting, I mean, he was starting to come up, right? Yes. I mean, he was healthy. He was playing well for Arsenal. Oh, uh, he was getting a lot of love on Twitter. Um, and then boom, he goes to AFCON. Not, not only, not only does Ghana miss out, right. And leave in the group stage after being one of the favorites, uh, he comes back. He takes like an early flight home to get back for that Carabao Cup semifinal leg. He gets on the pitch late in the game, and then he proceeds to get a red card. And and oh. uh, not only did he get trounced and kicked out of the Carabao Cup, he also uh, was ejected. Um, and yeah, so um, you I feel sorry for my guy Barty, man, but he is in good form. So let's yes. let's hope he keeps on going, man, with that. And uh, yeah, but a player, let's. That's slow on form, and it seems to be that AFCON is is treating him well. I got to say Moriba. And yeah. Moriba was awarded, guys, the youngest, uh, aye, aye, the best player, the best young player of the group stages at AFCON, yep. okay? I was surprised, but I love it. I love it. So it was good to see him pick Guinea instead of Spain. So it's good to see, man. It's good to see players going with their, their, aye, their home country. And yeah. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Love it. And Guinea, I think Guinea plays um, Gambia to mm -hmm. start uh, in the knockout round. So uh, they've got, you know, Gambia has been good, but they have they have a, a solid shot at moving on and they could surprise. Um, and Moriba will get his chance. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you what, there were so many people in AFCON or so many players in AFCON that we were like chomping at the bit hmm. uh, to see, right? Mo Salah has not necessarily uh, shown up yet. Fuck. Okay, he hasn't exactly been Mo Salah for Egypt. Um, but guess for for every Salah or for every um who's the one that just went crashing out? Uh for every um, Mare or yeah. Obama Yang, right? There is Akraf Hakimi. Shh. Akraf Hakimi. And he went in with all the pressure on his shoulders. And I don't even think he had a good first group stage game. But Hakimi has shown he's delivered so far. Uh he's kind of fit right into that Moroccan mold. And and I'm I'm going to say it right now. I do think Morocco does have what it takes to win this tournament. Jeez. And I think a lot of that has to do with Akraf Hakimi. Um, Whoa. So, so yeah. Morocco beating Senegal? Um, well, it's it's possible. If, Se if, Senegal, if Senegal comes into this, um, are they in the – I'm trying to, I'm trying to um, bring up the knockout round in my head and I – uh, oh, if I they meet in the final, or they meet yeah. earlier, but still, that that's a that's a bold prediction, Morocco to win it. Love it. It, it is, one. and I, I actually am changing. I'm going from Senegal winning it all. I'm going to change it to Morocco winning it all right now. Chee. Okay, I'm, not gonna uh, go I'm, a, I'm a waffler. I'm a waffler, like the best of them. Uh, and uh, no, I think Morocco. You got to look at it. Like Morocco mm. doesn't have, didn't have um, Zayek coming into mm -hmm. this. Uh, I looked at that as kind of a definitely a missing piece. The mm -hmm. same way I looked at all of the players that were left behind by Nigeria mm -hmm. um, coming in, and there you go. Nigeria and Morocco have been two of the bigger standout performers mm -hmm. uh, in Afcon. So uh, it really comes down to in this particular tournament, it's less about star power; it's mm -hmm. more about putting them all together, consistency. Mm -hmm. um, you know that Denmark appeal mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> of. True. Just the cohesion, and uh, if you can get uh, a guy like Ak Akraf Hakimi to make a run uh, down the right and, and serve a ball to mm -hmm. whatever and, and make a, a phenomenal movement in order to win a game that's deadlocked, um, 
that's the star appeal there. But uh, yeah, Morocco and Nigeria are two very, very tough teams. Um, and the other thing I can bring up is the Ivory Coast. Uh, yes. You were about to talk about them. Yes. I got to say, this, say this before before I you know let you speak here. Nicolas Pepe in the Premier League. Yes. <laughs> Nicolas Pepe in Afcon. Like <laughs> wow, you know, you know, it's 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 been a lot. He's bold in in Afcon. It's <laughs> great. To see. That's uh, fun. I, yeah. That's facts. And I was going to say, like, the two, my two favorites is Senegal and the team that you just mentioned, Ivory Coast, because, like, they just were taking it personal against Algeria, like, battering them. Like, it's, there was even a goal that the, the, it was 4 1, but yeah. then it got to 3 1 because it was disallowed. And, but the fact that they just wanted more and more and more, like, the, they were hungry. And that's why I think, or it's going to be Ivory Coast or Senegal, like I was saying before. And you mentioned Pepe, Kessier, Kessier for me, (laughs) unbelievable, and the big boy player. And for me, he's performing too at his club. It's Sebastian Haller. And Sebastian Haller will keep on giving at AFCON. And I'm, I'm confident. I'm confident. Yeah. Well, the funny thing there is like, yeah, okay, Kessier has been great. Uh, Haller's uh, starting to heat up for sure. Uh, Pepe has been pretty good and very dangerous for them. But for Ivory Coast, the, the player, one of the players of the tournament right now for Ivory Coast for me has been Ibrahim uh, Ibrahim Sangare, mm-hmm. who I believe is a PSV Eindhoven uh, player. And I, I know he's been doing this, you know, all season for PSV, and he's kind of missing him today versus I. They're kind of missing him today versus Ajax. Mm-hmm. I don't know the score right now, but it's going on as we speak. <laughs> and I keep looking at Ibrahim Sangare, and I say, you know, United is looking for a D mid, mm. and, and you want like a, a low financial risk, high potential reward type of situation. Ibrahim Sangare, his numbers could potentially fit the bill. I don't know if his passing fits the bill, uh, but definitely his marauding and his, his tackling and, and his uh, physical ability uh, to dominate the middle of the pitch. Um, those are those are pretty good qualities that, that Ralph Rangnick could have a whole lot of fun with. Um, so I don't know. But Sangare, for me, has been one of the players of the tournament right now. Definitely. That's, that's an interesting mention. Is there anything with AFCON you'd like to mention more? Um, only thing, only other thing is we talked a little bit about Nigeria. I mean, Kalechi Iannaccio, uh, keeps coming up and and doing big things, but the, the guy that's been really, really good for them is their left winger. And that's Moses Simon, who a lot of people don't know much about. He's in league one. He plays for Nantes. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, I think, you know, he actually has like two goals, six assists in league one this year. Um, which for the team that Nantes is. Mm-hmm. Um, that's pretty good. Uh, so if anyone's out there looking to take a flyer on a very dangerous winger, Moses Simon, you could, you could get him for pretty cheap is my, is my, you know, recollection, but he has been very, very dangerous for Nigeria. And mm-hmm. it's kind of one of those things where, yeah, you thought like a Victor Osimen was going to be the ruler of AFCON here. And that yet he winds up not coming and other names have stepped up for Nigeria. So, um, very, very dangerous. And then, uh, we we can't we can't go on without mentioning this. This is not Afcon related, but it is African World Cup related. Mm-hmm. It is it's almost like it's almost a travesty that Stadio Mane <laughs> and Senegal are going to have to face Mo Salah and Egypt for a spot in the World Cup. Sadio Mane or Mo Salah will not be at the World Cup, and that that saddens me. That, it saddens. Me. It, it should, man. It should. But I, I, I do think Senegal will get the better of it. But that yeah. is something that expect the unexpected. A lot can happen, guys. But put down in the comment section, what do you want to see? And what have you missed out on the AFCON, okay? Players, games, tell us in the comment section below. But yeah. now comes the time. Wonder Kids news here at FC Wonder Kid, okay? And Ooh. I wanted to start here because... Ah, it's a pity, man. I had to start with Fati. Fati, yes. man. For me, yeah. like Fati, no cap people. He's a generational talent when he's not injured, man. Okay. And seeing that he needs to get another surgery to reduce the risk of relapse. Okay. That's going to take four to five months, man. 
you just don't it's it's just so sad to see man hope all the best friends do fati but i know this is a huge blow for chavi huge so yeah. i don't know dembele might stay i don't know but someone no, needs I, to I, come if fati they, they, uh, yeah, I, I want to. I want to be wrong about this Barcelona refresh, but as of as of right now, uh, you know, you, you were bringing up Atletico Madrid's, um, you know, standing place in the La Liga standings and and getting kicked out of the Super Cup and all this. Um, Barcelona's right there too, man. Knocked out in Copa del Rey round of sixteen. They're out of the Champions League. They got Europa League that doesn't necessarily seem feasible, but who knows. Knocked out of the Super Cup. They're like sixth place in La Liga. Mm -hmm. um, they have a good clear shot at fourth or above, but we'll, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. But yeah, these these things, these personnel things, they're so muddied mm. that Ansu Fati, it just sucks. I, I, <laughs> he is generational and he is phenomenal and I want to see him stay healthy and it just doesn't seem like it's in his cards at this moment. But like the bigger blow right now is Usmani Dembele. And he's frozen out as it seems right he's frozen out mm -hmm. unless he signs a contract yeah um I understand or they it. got or they sell him but how do you sell a guy that you what you spent 150 million dollars on exactly exactly <laughs> that, <laughs> that is so about 150 million was it well, dollars uh american uh, dollars. i was like whoa wait, right. jeez i was like hey, yeah. are going bold, but like yeah, it's definitely they. Oh my days, man! It doesn't look good for for Barca, but I don't. I I, I can't disagree with selling him, man. Okay, I'd sell yeah. him on the dot, even if it's 15, 20 million because of those salaries, man. That is what's yeah. terrorizing the club. But going on a positive note, I was very happy to see Ferran Torres score his first goal. Yeah. And it's it was a great goal, and it's one to watch, one for the future for Barcelona. Uh, but Fati with this blow, it's yeah. But I'm still confident, Bretson. I'm still extremely confident with Ferran, Gavi, Nico, all of those coming up, even Ronaldo Rouge. But yep. I understand, I understand the doubts for sure. I, I I will I will uh I will leech on to you and uh and and hope for the best for Barcelona. It, this has nothing to do with um. This just has to do with resetting of expectations for, for Barcelona fans, mm -hmm. I think. I, I think. Um, I think that there is definitely a path, but mm -hmm. that path was a whole lot murkier uh, back to, um, you know, uh, dominance. Mm -hmm. uh, that path is a whole lot murkier than people understand, and I just wish that there would be a, l a little more of a dose of realism uh, coming out of the Barcelona top brass. Mm -hmm. Not Xavi. Say it's up. It's up to Chavi to keep everybody encouraged, and he. I do believe he is probably the right man to do the job. Um, not not that anybody's asking me. I gotta always set myself down there. Um, but man, it, th them these guys playing the hardball with Usmani Dembele. It's just you have th to. You have to, Brett. To, that guy you know, is pranking the club, man. In my opinion, uh, how many times has uh, been injured? How many? Like it's. I, I I think if I'm a, if look if I was a stone cold Barcelona fan I'd be I'd hate Dembele and it's it's sad man it's sad and I like I I'm not gonna Dembele has all the talents of the world man you know what I'm saying and people were saying oh Dembele he's gonna be better than Mbappe he's gonna be the best player in the world Barcelona fans were hyped <laughs> next level and all this happens so. I think it's just refresh, rebuild, new faces, and yeah, new faces like Holland that has 101 goal involvements and a goal and assist every how many minutes? Yeah, every 64, I believe, 63 minutes. There you it's, go. It's, it's, so that's what it's, Barcelona needs, my guy. <laughs> so I coming to Dortmund. <laughs> it, uh, crazy. He's just got this air of inevitability about him, and and you know what? Looking at the standings, mm -hmm. there. Dortmund's not out of it yet. They're not out of it yet. Um, but but it obviously, when Bayern plays it, it feels like they're out of it. But yeah, I mean, it, it is remarkable to see. We're all we everybody's talking about this air and of inevitability that Bayern mm -hmm. win the Bundesliga, and yet you know they mm -hmm. they do have three losses this season, right? And they're only technically with a game in hand, six points ahead. Mm -hmm. um, so. Yeah, it's just amazing, and it, and it's it's amazing that when Robert Lewandowski eventually moves on Ooh. or 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 retires at some point in the future, um, 
you know, Erling Holland, whether he's, he's probably not going to be in the Bundesliga, mm-hmm. but wherever he is, he's going to keep up that I can score 50 goals in 30 games type of scenario. <laughs> and it's just, it's so ridiculous that we're like used to that now. Yeah. Um, Fucked. but yeah. Facts. I mean, yeah. I, I got to bring somebody up before I forget it. And this is biased. This is homered. This is me being an American. Okay. <laughs> I got to bring it up because I know we're going to go on to bigger players, right? More offensive players to talk about. But I got to bring up my guy, Josh Sargent. <laughs> yes, <Okay>? Sargent. <laughs> all right. I got to bring him up. All right. This guy, you know, okay. He's made some shoddy decisions when it comes to, you know, where he goes. He went to Werder Bremen. Werder Bremen obviously got ushered out of the Bundesliga. Okay. Uh, and they got saved multiple times, uh, and last year was the year that they couldn't do it. And then, of course, he goes to Norwich City, which was always going to be a relegation fight. Anyway, kid works his butt off. He mm-hmm. always has worked his butt off. He is not the most technical. He it does not work the hardest, but he you you can never fault um, him working. But yeah, he's if you look at like a roundup of his highlights for the first several months of this year, mm-hmm. it's. It's like miss hit after miss hit after sitter after whatever. And he go he went into this game the other day uh, not having scored a Premier League goal yet. Okay, which you know some of us wait all or wish all of our lives to have scored in the Premier League. Right. Anyway, kid has a baby the other day. Okay, not him physically having a baby. Obviously, uh, his <laughs> his significant other has a baby. Um, it, he he takes a little bit of a pause. There's all this Twitter chatter that Josh Sargent is. At- He's gone. He's not going to make the New York, Norwich City roster anymore. Mm-hmm. He's got to move on and get out of there. Um, and I just love it. He goes in and he scores a brace. And the first goal it seemed accidental um, or kind of a pipe dream for mm-hmm. what he was trying to do. Goodness. But he scores like a little bit of a scorpion kick. Yes. Uh, in his first goal. And it just a, a game that Norwich needed mm-hmm. to win. A three zip six point winner against Watford. Um, you know, they exit the relegation zone for right now. Mm-hmm. And Josh Sargent just like clears the slate. And I, I I'm going to say it right now, watch out for him moving forward. <laughs> um, more so as like a target for another team, but he could, once he starts scoring, he generally gets hot. Love it. Um, so we'll see. I just love it. It's, it's a guy he's near and dear to my heart. He's not, he wasn't playing well for us men's national team. Mm-hmm. He roundly got dropped, uh, understandably got dropped. Norwich city is basically like was in shambles. And now there's a little bit of hope Jeez. for the Canaries. We'll see. Jeez. There you go. Josh Sargent, man. I, I was, yeah, I was shook with that goal, man. And there was intent in it. I, that was a really good goal. Go watch the tape people. That no, mm-hmm. Josh Sargent goal, it's worth it. So I'm going to here mention the last using the Wonder Kids use on my part. It's, look, it's for me, it's sad that this happens, man. But I do yeah. think it's, it's a bit of a reality check to people that live in Europe and in and, and the States. I think uh, uh, Occidental, Western uh, countries, because Brazil is just a different ball game, man. It's yeah. different. Different. Football is different there because I'm going to tell you. The Copinha semifinals, okay? This is yep. where you see the youth talents, okay? We have Barcelona scouts. We have scouts from all over the world. And what happens in the Sao Paulo against Palmeiras? We have a man that goes inside the pitch with a knife and is threatening, threatening Palmeiras players. Threat, not players, kids. Kid. Kids. 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 Copinha. This is That's unbelievable. Insane. That's insane. The guy has to go to prison, has to be convicted, has to. Okay. That And Roger, man, big up to to the uh, to Caillou forward of, of, um, of, of Sao Paulo, okay, that went up, stopped the attacker, okay, and nothing, nothing worse happened, okay, but... It's such a pity that things like this happens and the referee had to seize the knife. Like, yeah. oh my days. That's that's how I know that Brazil is different, okay? Oh my days. So, yeah, yeah that happened. That's, that's not exactly the type of different we want to be highlighting. But, oh. uh, yeah, that's that's tough. Um, and I Just didn't me. even see who won. Do we know who Paul won Maris. the coping? Uh, Palmeiras, Palmeiras won one nil the semi final, and that's gonna happen. Okay. The other, but Hendrik, guys, watch out on Hendrik. I, I want to see it. I want to see yeah. more on him. But yeah, that was yeah, that was it was the semi final. So yeah, it was sad, man. Sad. Well, sad, I, sad. I see some future content for us. We gotta like list 
10 next next gen Brazilian strikers to watch out for or something. Because, yeah, that Copinha is a lot of fun to watch every year. I mm-hmm. didn't get to watch as much of it as I wanted to because I've been watching a lot of AFCON. But, um, there you go. But, man, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. So it's a shame we have to highlight that stuff, and um, I only hope that's the last time. But – a little less, a little less negative, uh, but I got to. There's got to be a call to action here. Leon, mm-hmm. Leon, okay? uh, play yes. Rayon Cherokee <laughs> more, please, yes. please. Yes. Like it's been over three months since the kid has gotten a start in Two League games. One. Two games. I, it, it's unreal, and I don't understand. In Europa League, they put him in. He has like four starts in Europa League in the group stages. He had two goals, three assists. Yep. Yeah. And he's only got 295 minutes played in the league where you're mid table. You're like, not good. You're done. League one is done for Lyon. It is. It's just terrible. Okay. Play Rayon Cherky. Give him the keys to the attack and let him go. I just don't understand why there is no opportunity given to him. Um, and maybe it's, I don't know. Is it attitude? I have no mm. clue. And but- like adding to that, even pairs are on AFCON. Like, the yeah. players that he's replacing in that Leon team, they're on AFCON. Yeah. So, what's yeah. the justification on Bosch? Man, I, you're hitting the money, Brunson. I'm loving it. I'm loving it's it. It's tough. It is tough. Oh. I mean, this is, a kid, this is a kid that can change a game. And um, he has deficiencies. But he's got to work through those deficiencies. He is very he is clear enough to start for any of the other 11 uh, – or, I'm sorry, any of the other uh, teams in mm-hmm. League One. And you know, I think he's still only still only eighteen, right? Maybe maybe he just turned nineteen. But like, come on, mm-hmm. your your whole back line, your whole back line is like Leon Academy players, okay? <laughs> Castello Luqueba. I mean, you've got yes. really good, you've got really good players, uh, but they are making mistakes too, mm-hmm. and and they're a big reason why you're like mid table and not doing so hot in League One, okay? But there's promise there, so let them. You, this League One season's already thrown out. Okay, let them work through and start to trust that academy again. I don't understand it. Um, and Brown Cherokee just has that special whatever. And if they're not careful, you know, they're going to lose them the same way they lost. Uh, was it Yassin Adli or was he elsewhere? He was PSG, right? I mean, Guri. I think it was Amin I mean, Guri. Guri. That's who I'm thinking of. Yeah, Guri, uh, who I think had another, he had a goal and an assist today for Nice again. I mean, the, so... the kid's on fire. The, for me, it's you got to play Shirky because, two, Shirky it might be the most generational talent in the past five, ten years that Leon has had. Everybody knew about Shirky even before he went to that first team. And the other player that I look that they, he has, he must be seeing red flags is Florent de Silva, man. And that player, I love him. He's a stud, he's got the dribbling, the technique. Right decision making that is not easy to find with youngsters. So sure. Florent de Silva, man. If it doesn't go well, Leon. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, Kak there, but he's still there. So uh, Leon has Usem Maor. Like yep. he's 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 gonna go every transfer window. He's still there. So yeah. maybe he should have gone already, and sure. they should have signed of so- someone new. So yeah. oh man. So people. If there's anything that we've missed out in the Wonder Kids news, please put down below in the comment section below. And yeah, go bold on that one. But now we're going to the transfers. Your favorite. <laughs> my favorite, Your favorite. Personally, my favorite. Yeah. I'm going to start with a bargain transfer that okay. I think every, every single listener needs to know about. I saw it just now this morning. Sardar Azmun has just signed for Bayer Leverkusen for free. For, as a yeah. free agent next summer, what a bargain! What a bargain it, it, by Leverkusen, man! Elite business, elite. It, it is, it is elite business. But did you did you see the little wrinkle there? Whoa, whoa, whoa! Appear, apparently, he left to negotiate the deal without actually getting permission from his current club. Mm. So uh, he's going to have a pretty tough next six months until his deal is up. Which is <laughs> in who Russia, knows? man. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I think I think that's not a place you necessarily want to like just go out of bounds and whatever. But <laughs> but Bayer Leverkusen is a great next place for Asmoon. Yes. Um, and and he's he's been very prolific in in Russia and uh in the in the little bit we've gotten to see him mm-hmm. uh play with the uh, Iranian national team, he is phenomenal. So um I love that 
I love that signing and I hope he does well. I hope his club actually plays him over the next six months um, mm -hmm. or he's going to have one hell of a holiday. Um, mm. But yeah, that is, that is great business. And Bayer Leverkusen tends to do great very business. good. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Man, and did, did they, you know, I've been watching Augsburg a lot because of the Ricardo Pepe transfer there. <laughs> um, and I'm not ashamed to say it, but mm. watching Augsburg is also like wanting to gouge my eyes out a little bit because they just, they, they have nobody that can create, okay? But anyway, Bayer Leverkusen just manhandled them. Musa mm -hmm. Diaby just manhandled Augsburg the other day. Uh, Florian Wirtz is massively underrated, in my opinion, even though he is one of the most talked about 18-year-olds on this planet. Mm -hmm. um, he is massively underrated for what he can do. Um, the orchestration and the little bit, like, he can take a man on in the box he can I don't know, there's just so many different things that he can do that i really do feel i almost put him in my underrated 11 so so you'd pick a fierce ahead of harvard's now uh oh well i don't know i don't know i mean i think i think have harvard's you seen probably... harvard's at this level at leverkusen i don't I, i'll be honest really? with you harvard's was special but Wirtz, I think he looks a bit more special than Kai Havertz at Bayer Leverkusen. That's me personally. That's me yeah, personally. well, I'm, I'm going to agree with that. But there, there were definitely some Kai Havertz uh, <laughs> uh, games for Leverkusen where you're like, oh, this kid is very, very good. And I still think we're going to see it mm -hmm. with Chelsea or maybe somewhere else. But, uh, yeah, Florian Wirtz is great. And I think if you can get – if you can hold on to them somehow – for another year, Patrick Schick, um, and and let Osmond come in there, um, man, you're gonna, if, you're gonna if, let yeah, him even like Jeremy Frinkpong, I think is like a transfer that's underrated at that right back spot. Definitely. And I know you're a big fan too of Ezekiel Palacios, so yes. that was a that was a great buy by them too, man. So Leverkusen. Just wish he stayed healthy. Uh, yeah, but Leverkusen, they they know business. I top saw bad too. Here on the yeah. here on the Portuguese no like at Guimarães like seeing to going to Leverkusen, great deal yep. by them. Uh, and I know I saw a transfer news and I had to mention it because yeah. I know you're a huge fan of him. And we're here in yeah. the Bundesliga talk, and I think this is gonna happen, people. Adam Holzek I think is going to the Bundesliga, okay? And it's Bayern or Dortmund. Who's your yeah. pick? Who's your pick to sign Oza? I I I would pick Dortmund. Because yes. of what I've seen, what I saw with uh, yeah. with Sancho, but look, if I was Holzak's agent, I wouldn't be refusing Bayern too. Because, like, the fact is, he can become a legend, a mm -hmm. legend, and solidify himself at Bayern. Adam Holzak staying yeah. there in form because I think he he can do it. He can make yeah. it happen. So what's yeah, your choice? I I think Dortmund needs a refresh in the midfield, in, in the, in the attack, uh, beyond obviously Holland potentially leaving and the air of that hanging over them, um, too. And, and Adam Hlozek is a guy that would be able to contribute, I believe right away. Mm -hmm. Uh, but also the prospect of getting into that Bayern machine. He is one of those guys that, <laughs> that I, I can't see him going to Bayern just to sit on the bench and like wait a few mm -hmm. years. I, I see him as a kid that, that will, would actually contribute right away for Bayern. I agree um, yeah. So I, I almost want the Bayern, but that just makes the strong stronger. <laughs> so it's <laughs> it's tough. But I like that. I like that shout a lot. And um, but I man. did see too. Like for me, if Bayern get this deal done, I saw it too. Yep. It's if Bayern Munich get Frankie De Jong, okay. Mm -hmm. If they because we know before Frankie went to Barcelona to Ajax, like it was yep. City, Barcelona. And Bayern, okay? And I remember speaking to you and saying, look, Bayern managed to get Frankie de Jong, man. The, what, what, what will they do with him next to Kimish, man? This is going to yeah. be scary scene. So seeing the possibility of them signing, I saw the news. I got to mention it. And I do think yeah. it's the best fit for Frankie de Jong. So. Yeah, well, and, and why stop there? Why stop there? Go go full Ajax collection mode and get Matisse de Ligt, too. Um, you know, I, as, as we've seen, he's, he's kind of up for grabs in that sense. They've, they've put a, they've put a, um, a number on him. You've got Nicholas Sule leaving, mm -hmm. right? Um, now Sule's a very big body, very big body. I don't know if you're going to be able to like, but you have, you have Upa Meccano already, mm -hmm. but you can go out you can get a Delict as well. Uh, and Delict against, uh, next to an Upa Meccano. 
Oh, that be that, but I I love that, Bretson. I'm just gonna be devil advocate here because Chayola with Bayern. Yeah, well, Pini Zahavi has Lewandowski though. True, that's true. I, 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 <laughs> you see, see, yeah. but see, but Frankie, oh, but Deli, I I'd love that deal too, man. Oh, I think Vardiol will eventually go to Bayern Munich. That would be Did my it? bet. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's because, another underrated player. He's been very good, very good for Le Leipzig. For sure, um, for sure. So, uh, yeah, in the tra uh, underrated transfer, you mentioned underrated. I saw my notes here, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna say the team. You're gonna say the player, Man City. Kay. Yeah, yeah, El Aranya. Uh, that's my the extent <laughs> of my Spanish. Sorry. Uh, yeah, Julian Alvarez. I, I, I. How I, if you're talking low financial risk, high potential reward? You can't mm -hmm. get any better than Julian Alvarez's numbers for uh, River Plot. Um, yes, I, I, I know that they're already talking with them, and Alvarez could be heading to City. Um, but I, I see a better place for him. And you're gonna kind of laugh at this. No, oh, come Everybody's on. Everybody's chasing everybody. Like everybody in the Barcelona camp is chasing like Marata or hell. I even saw like Oscar bringing back Oscar mm. from China. Right, Julian Alvarez at Barcelona makes sense to me. Julian Alvarez at Barcelona makes a lot of sense to me. Okay. Manchester City, it I don't know. I get While you. I get I get you. I get you though, but I think for for the best of football. <laughs> <laughs> I think, no, honestly, though, but seriously, I think Julian Alvarez, I don't think he's a direct similar player to Aguero. I think they're yeah. different players. I think okay. Aguero is more of a dribbler. I think he's more of a finisher, Julian Alvarez. Yep. But I got to say, it's a very, very good move by City. And it, oh, this, yeah. clearly, this clearly has a touch of Guardiola in here because Guardiola would be the type of manager that would invest in a youngster, a top youngster with good numbers. And mm -hmm. let's be honest too, like Guardiola knows Argentinian players pretty well. And I'm sure, I'm sure he might've had a chat with Lionel Messi about Julian Alvarez. And he knows what's going to happen if he comes to Man City. So I think Julian Alvarez is a perfect, perfect fit. For Barcelona, uh, for, for Man City, but Barcelona, uh, <laughs> you're already programming me. <laughs> look at that! But, look at but, that! I planted the seed. <laughs> <laughs> but the but I just you know man, it's just because I'm really bullish on Holland Barcelona. I can't see yeah. something else. Morata for me is disappointing. If that if if Morata goes to Barcelona instead of Holland or even Julian yeah. Alvarez, like you're suggesting, for me is disappointing. Even yeah. Karima Dayemi, I went, but he rejected the club. <laughs> so, yeah, but, but, <laughs> purely from like a financial financial perspective, like Julian Alvarez I, yeah. just makes sense if you're if you're looking at Bayern or Bayern, goodness, uh, Barcelona. Barcelona uh, you know, trying to balance the books while also bringing really, really flipping talented people, mm -hmm. uh, especially knowing that Ansu Fati has another spell on the sidelines you can't do no wrong but yeah from a business perspective city mm -hmm. football group getting julian alvarez mm -hmm. i don't care if they loan him back to river plot i mean if you get him for the 25 30 million that they're yep. expecting uh, that's that's like you're printing money <laughs> it's a bargain yeah. it's a bargain and i have another player too that for a top club i think it's going to be a bargain and it's because of his contract situation and it's yeah. ryan gravenberch I see that oh. his contract is going to expire in 2023. So, people, I fully expect Ajax to be selling him this summer. And the teams that I think are in pole position are Arsenal, PSG, Real Madrid, and Liverpool. The one I think would be best, I think it's Tottenham. Because Tottenham okay. has a history with Ajax players. And Tottenham mm -hmm. definitely needs a midfielder next to Oiberg. And Gravenberch would be that youngster. And Conte, I think Conte would prefer Kessier. Yes, okay, people, yeah. Frank Kessier. But Gravenberch would be something very, very good. And Tottenham fans need that hope, that future hope, okay? I think they're lacking yeah. in it now, okay? Tanganga, Troy Parrott, Oliver Skip, very good. But just yeah. getting another player, man, getting another youngster, Gravenberch would be for Tottenham. Yeah, and it so, actually yeah. surprised me the other day when I looked up like the age of Harry Winks. 
you know, the kid looks like he's 18, but apparently he's 25. I'm not, uh, I'm not, yeah. you, I, I, I'm not a Harry Winks big, I'm not a big fan of Harry Winks. I, he's too no. passive. The guy's too oh. passive. Okay. I mean, no, I, I obviously do believe that Ryan Gravenberg would be a, a step up from Skip Winks, Lo Celso. I mean, anyone you want to put in that, they're obviously all not the same in terms mm-hmm. of midfielder, but, uh, but yeah, you put him in there. Uh, you, you've got your midfield locked down for years. Kid's got size, composure. I mean, mm-hmm. there's just so much good about him. I don't think he gets enough love for what he does for Ajax. Um, but um, we'll, we'll we'll see. I mean, that is a good one. I didn't know it was that. I, I wonder if Ajax is going to do the hey, we're going to sign you to 2027 and then offload you for 100 million. Mm-hmm. You know, type of, serious, type of thing. If they were smart, but um, I, I I think also they're probably looking at it and saying. Man, that would be embarrassing if we let Ryan Gravenberg go on a free exactly. in the future. Exactly. Um, it's all yeah. right. Well, you know, speaking of underrated, I, I got to bring up one. Um, did you have any more to say about that IX? Oh no 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 no. I got to go back to my American roots here, man. <laughs> have you seen Have you seen the Brendan Aronson news? No, I haven't. Okay. All right. Well, there was a stat, and I haven't verified the stats. So tell me if I'm wrong, right? But I think it's Opta or somebody does the the metrics on it and and uh, forget who it was. It was either Jesse Marsh or Greg Berhalter or somebody. Someone in the American space looked it up. The distance covered. Okay, Brendan Aronson is in the top one percent of players in distance covered per game. Okay, Ooh. so what does that tell you? Liverpool. He's, yeah, right. It could be. <laughs> but but you know who's chasing him? Who? You know who's chasing? Him? Who is who is frenetic in the Premier League that needs a shot, needs an injection of of especially because they just lost to Newcastle. Uh, who needs an injection of that type of an engine, right? Like uh, just somebody that's going to run his um, his butt off uh, for the club. It's Marcelo Bielsa and Leeds United. Okay, <laughs> apparently Marcelo Bielsa have, has already Aww. maybe not him individually, but Leeds United has already put in a fifteen million pound bid. For Brendan Aronson, and they were rejected, rejected by Red Bull Salzburg, and they have apparently upped it to above twenty million pounds. Mm-hmm. This is a kid. This is a kid that literally just signed for Salzburg a little over than a year ago, a little over a year ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's he's impressing. I mean, he really is impressing. His motor, his ability to learn, his ability to do even you know the simplest tasks, and uh, you know just be able to do them all ninety minutes. Um, and I really do believe, I really do believe that by the end of this window, you might see Brendan Aronson in the Premier League, which, which would be really crazy because this is a kid, he's from Medford, okay? Medford's five miles in that direction, Medford, New Jersey. Uh, I grew up about two miles away from Medford, um, and we know the Aronson family. Uh, we watched them come up through the Unions Academy, and just to see a hometown kid, even in the, even in the transfer talk of the Premier League is is pretty amazing. And I'm sure you've got plenty of kids you grew up with, right? Or plenty <laughs> of kids you've grown up watching. Yes. Um, this this is one that's near and dear to my heart in the sense that Brendan Aronson, you know he's gonna he's gonna fit in very well uh wherever he goes because he's a he's a sponge. He's mm-hmm. a sponge. He takes in whatever he's got and he's twenty one and he's he's ready to ready to get it done and I only hope he can do it um bring us to the World Cup too. But anyway, Brendan Aronson for more than twenty million pounds to the Premier League. That'd be crazy. That'd be amazing. For what you're talking, man, he's worth more than 20, honestly. And I've seen him play. I've seen him play. And I I agree with you. I think he's madly underrated. And I, if for English fans, compare him a bit like with Conor Gallagher type beats, okay? Mm -hmm. But Brendan Aronson just seems to think more about the game and less going forward. So I like it. He dictates the tempo. I like it. And there is another thing, too, that he has a brother, right? You're coming. You're yeah, seeing him brother. coming off the scenes too now. So yeah, his, his brother is ahead of where he was at his age. Uh, so you should see Paxton Aronson is uh, should have a big big year for for the Union um, this year and could be the next to either move to Salzburg or who the hell knows. But yeah, there's some good stuff and other other American names have actually moved recently. I don't know if you've been seeing this, but Matt Turner was the yes. subject he's our goalkeeper he's the subject of a arsenal bid uh for about seven or eight million pounds or do- seven, i don't know which 
which currency. But Matt Turner to be the backup to Aaron Ramsdale it could be worse jobs. If if you're a guy, this guy went undrafted. I don't know if you know what the draft is yes. in Major League <laughs> Soccer, but they pull you. He went to a, a small college named Fairfield, um, not exactly seen as a powerhouse, mm. and uh, he did not get signed. He did not get signed at all. He went, he earned himself a job with the New England Revolution, and then a couple years of doing well there, he earns himself the U.S. men's national team job uh, competing with Zach Steffen, and now Arsenal wants him? <laughs> Pretty amazing for a guy to get his uh, thing. So uh, another guy, Cole Bassett, goes to fire, uh, Fanord. A lot of good stuff happening on that front. But anyway, there are other things to talk about. What other big transfers do you uh, do you need to highlight? I got to highlight the reunion that can happen between Luis Suarez and Stevie G. That'd be that'd be pretty impressive if Stevie G managed to get this done. And this is an underrated stat about Suarez that I got to say. People forget, but Suarez, in a generation with Lionel Messi and Cristian uh-huh. Ronald, he won the Golden Boot twice, okay? And not too many players in this decade managed to do something like that. So Stevie G managing to get continue. Suarez, maybe Bentacur that we're seeing used for 20 million too. Like Digne yeah. coming off too. Like the quality has stepped up. And yeah, I'm I'm loving to see. And another transfer that I had to mention too was Fabio Carvalho. Fabio okay. Carvalho to Liverpool. I saw six million. Oh my okay. days. Is signing championship ballers that cheap? Come on. I'm watching Fulham sometimes. I watch two games of Fulham and Fabio Carvalho was balling out of these games, man. The yeah. pinpoint passes, the dribbling. I was shocked, man. Portugal, yeah. sign him up, man, okay? Because I saw him, he's representing England. So we got to get something up with this. But Fabio Carvalho, man, it's w- wonderful to see. And if yeah. Liverpool managed to get him for six million, bargain, bargain, bargain. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I it? just sorry. I just wish Fulham would get out of that, like... <laughs> Hey, we're good enough to be in the Premier League. Have you seen how many goals they've scored in the championship right now? They're like at they're like 30 more than the second best offense in the second best attack in the championship. They've scored 30 more goals Marcos than that. Marco Silva. Marco Silva. Uh, Marco Silva. People say Portuguese bias. Go check. Go check Marco Silva. Pa. So you're saying Everton should bring back Marco Silva for a second run? I think they should be sent. Yeah, if they didn't get booted. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you need to get, yeah. get those suggestions, man. But people, yeah. if there's anything that we've missed out in the transfers, please put down below in the comment section below. Uh, I think we're going to have some quick, quick fires now. So yeah. we're putting quick, each other on the spot. Uh, yeah. You want to start here? Yeah, I got I got one for you. Okay. You know, this might, this might show a little bit of uh, some Portuguese bias for you, but I got to ask. Yeah, in the next in the next few years, which player is most likely to live up to their massive transfer fee? <laughs> João Felix or Jaden Sancho? Ah, uh, João Felix, no doubt. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that that was fast too because I think João Felix when he moves out yeah. of Atlético, it's gonna be next level. It's gonna be okay. next level. So yeah, I do you think feel jo- Sancho. Do you think Sancho can do it while staying at his club? That's the question. That, that no, 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 no. That's my question. But 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 my my why I answered it so quick was the fact that Sancho just arrived for 18 million and and he's 21, 22. Jean Felix, yeah. 22, 21, 22, the same. He's going to leave Atleti and he's going to go somewhere that he'll play much better. So, and I I'm not I'm, I hope I hope Sancho figures it out with Man United. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, so I think the only difference there, the only reason I brought it up was because yeah, you're confident that he'll find the the best next club. Mm-hmm. But that that confidence, I don't know, agents screw things up sometimes. Ah, no, trust me, uh, man. George Minch, you know. okay. I I I look, I, I we can say a lot about George Minch, but when it's clutch time, when his yeah. player really needs it, he delivers, okay? I got to okay. say, it. and he, for Felix, I think the next move that he's going to have, it's going to be, it's going to, I think Liverpool and Man City are the, in pole position, in my opinion. But Juve okay. would be interesting too, because they could, they could always pitch something with, we got Chiesa yeah. and we can have Felix, but the problem yeah. is if Chiesa will stay at Juve, but that's a whole different conversation. First, he's got to come back, yeah. And Dybala, obviously, could wind up leaving. But that's the thing. is 
does does George Mensch, uh, you know, <laughs> care about this, or does he care about getting him the best playing but environment? But if Felix if Felix plays more, that'd be the best for him too. So let's see, let's sure. see. So I'm gonna come here, shoot you with a question now. It's rebuild time. Guardiola leaves Man City. Who should replace him? Arteta or Patrick Vieira? Like I saw the suggestions in the Athletic. Oh, jeez. Um, uh, I, I, it's, it seems pretty easy for me. M- Mikel yeah. Arteta would be a better choice. Um, I, okay. I, I you know, Pat, Pat, Patrick Vieira for me does not have the. He's failed pretty much everywhere he went previous to getting to Crystal Palace, mm. um, and he's only been at Crystal Palace a little while. Mikel Arteta at least is a a. Um, he, he at least has the experience in building an actual system or trying to build a system that is currently still ongoing at Arsenal. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I – and, and Mikel Arteta was previously an assistant. Yes, with of Guardiola. Guardiola right? mm-hmm. So Arteta for me. I mean, I, that's more the rational pick, mm-hmm. I think. I, I, so I'm, I, agree I like to think I'm rational. I'm going to say Mikel. I agree with you. I, saw, I just saw the news at the Athletic. I was thinking, mm, Patrick Vieira, though, he's he's doing something with that youth. And But I agree. I agree. I agree. Yeah, he's still a question mark for me. But, man, I, I would like to see a uh, resurgence of the, the French influence on Man City. That'd be cool. Um, uh, I believe there used to be some, right? Yeah. Mm. Maybe French speaking is what I'm thinking of. But anyway, uh, all right, my next one. This is a really quick one. I just want to know where your loyalties lie when it comes to this. Hmm. If you had to pick one of the two iconic Scottish clubs, who would it be? Rangers or Celtic? Celtic. Celtic. Really? Oh, just be because you've got like a four-leaf clover? Uh, come on. I'm, I'm, I'm half Irish. My mom's Irish, I'm... so I got to say Celtic. My Catholic my Catholic veins are saying, they're all saying, say Celtic, say Celtic. And I got to say too, Jota, my guy Jota. He's at the right club, and he's performing extremely well. So, yeah, I'll go yeah. Celtic, man. I'll go Celtic. Yeah, all right. I, I, I thought maybe there'd be a hint of whatever. of, uh, uh, But, yeah, uh, I, I get it. I who get would it. you pick out of curiosity? Who, I, I grew up loving Rangers. Grew up loving Rangers. <laughs> yeah, they had Claudio Reina there back when they had Giovanni Von Braun. Of course, they had, Gen- they had Gennaro Gattuso mm-hmm. back in the day. Jeez. I mean, I grew up. I grew up kind of enjoying them, and then they ran themselves into like administration. So, there you whatever. Go. So, uh, I have another rebuild one now. Rebuild right. piece missing: Karima Dayemi yeah. or Jonathan David. Rebuild piece missing for who? Striker. Well, Stry- for who? Wait. Okay, Arsenal. Yeah. For Arsenal, uh, who are the two? Kareem Adeyemi or Jonathan David? Mm-hmm. Ooh, Jonathan David has done a phenomenal job at working on his weaknesses. Uh, Kareem Adeyemi is still pretty raw, uh, even though I know he's done very, very well in the Champions League and and you know that type of competition. But Jonathan David has actually kind of gotten a lot better at some of the things that he he missed out on uh, mm-hmm. in terms of like, he can go back and, and get a ball now, right. He can track down a ball. He does mm-hmm. a lot of things a whole lot better. He's a lot better in the channels. Um, so I'm going to say Jonathan David, I think is the piece could be a piece missing for, for Arsenal. Uh, but you if, know who I pick, man, I, you know yeah, who I yeah, pick, I man. Yeah. I did Amy. No doubt. Yeah. I, but yeah. I understand. I understand. I understand where your point of views and I, yeah. you, you sure know more about David than me, man, for sure. But yeah, he's a, uh, even without Davies, I'm very, very scared of Jonathan Davy and uh, Tayon Buchanan in our game against Canada next week. They're very good. Kids so, a we'll stud, see. man, right? That midfielder, stud, stud. Yeah. But, All uh, right, I got a good one for you. You ready? Okay, let's go. Who, who would you rather have on the ball 20 yards out in the dying moments of a match? Mm. James Ward-Prowse, Cristiano Ronaldo, or Beckham? I'd say word pros. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, that that screamer he hit the other day. And, <laughs> and, and and it's not on hating, man. I just really feel like the guy is a specialist on it. And yeah. I got sick of Ronaldo with free kicks. I'm gonna say it. You know, people say, "Oh, you love Ronaldo," but I'm sick of him with the free kicks, man. It's it just got to a point yeah. that at the national team, people that know me, I would say, "Put Rafael Gred putting those free kicks instead of Ronaldo." Okay, yeah. and it should have happened earlier. And yeah, but Beckham, uh, I didn't grow up seeing the Beckham you saw. So yeah. 
That well, that's, that's the only that's like the only wrinkle here is David Beckham. The reason I brought this up was because I saw a statistic that James Ward Prowse is now tied for second mm-hmm. all time in the Premier League in direct free kicks scored. Mm-hmm. Okay. So with that goal the other day, he's up to like 12 direct free kicks scored. I think he ties with Thierry Henry, mm-hmm. who is underrated when it comes to hitting a free kick. Um, but James Ward Prowse, uh, you know, he's got plenty of years left. Um and, and he does it for a team like Southampton. He's not doing it <laughs> where, you know, That's where, true. I don't know, maybe maybe get more opportunities with a United. I have no clue. But David Beckham, man, <laughs> eight, he's number one by six. Like, he's he's oh. got eight goals scored from a direct free kick. And I still remember some of the most iconic goals uh, of, of his, his career. Um, and so, I don't know. But JWP, I think, needs to make that next move. He's got to go somewhere where... Newcastle. Little... Newcastle. Oof. Get him to Newcastle, my guy. Don't get me started on Newcastle. <laughs> Last I question on be... my end. It's Fair enough. Who would you pick in today's game? To, to play in today's game. A legend to play in today's game. Who would you pick? Pelé, Johan Cruyff, or Maradona? Oh, goodness. Who would you pick to play in today's game? Oh, man. I think I'm going to pick something very unpopular here. I'm going to say I'm going to say Cruyff. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to say Johan Cruyff. Uh, total football, I don't know. You know, there's just something about being able to slot into a team thing and also be able to do the things Johan Cruyff could do. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe it's also because I had an affinity for the Cruyff turn growing up <laughs> playing football. I was very bad at it, but I was phenomenal at the Cruyff. Look at your jersey. Uh, Look at your jersey. Oh, well, yeah, I didn't even notice that. Look at the jersey. Uh, yeah, this is a little outdated for him. But, uh, yeah, Johan Cruyff, uh, there's there's something to be said about, like, his understanding of tactics, his, his understanding of the whole thing. Um, and there's also got to be something to be said about, like, come on, mm-hmm. Pele, we, 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 know the, we know the legend that is Pele. I'm sure he's probably the better choice when it all comes down to it because mm-hmm. physically he could take over a game. Technically he could take over a game. Just being on the field, he could take over a For game. Me, Pelé, Pelé, Pelé. Yeah, yeah I Pelé. get it. I mean, he overshadowed he Eusebio. And Eusebio yeah. was like the greatest Portuguese player of all time. Like, okay, now behind Cristiano Ronald, but still. Yeah. Jeez. Uh, Mar- Maradona, I, I mean, I feel like we're like not giving him as much love. I mean, some of the crap that he did. I just don't know if he'd get away with some of the crap that he did back in the day. <laughs> you, don't, you don't see any slalom ballers these days right you don't see many like guys that go skiing like he did but oh, obviously I, I, I thought you meant like him going and chilling with Pablo, Pablo Escobar type <laughs> there's a little of that <laughs> oh, there's a little of that uh, what, 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 what legends uh, though but yeah Johan Cruyff I think is just tremendously understated uh, when it comes to his his influence on the game and and his ability tactically too um and to understand his iq was amazing so that's tough all right i got i got one more and then i think are we done after that yes yes yes, yes. we've gone long all right i was looking back i went down the rabbit hole of looking at last season's transfers big transfers and there were some that were just tremendously underwhelming okay which is the most underwhelming of these premier league midfield transfers tiago to liverpool for 22 million Mm -hmm. donny van to united for 39 million euros Giovanni Lo Celso, Giovanni Lo Celso to Spurs for 32 million, Thomas Partey to Arsenal for 50 million euros. Which one was the most overwhelming? So this means the underwhelming. One... Un- underwhelming. Which one is underperformed the most? Okay, so Partey, Tiago Alcantara. Who are the other yep. two? Sorry, Tiago Alcantara. Be- I'm not gonna put. I'm not gonna put Tiago Alcantara. Really? Yeah. No, yeah. no, no. The guy, no, no, no. He's, 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 he's. I think he's undervalued in how good he's been playing for Liverpool. I, yeah. But okay. Van de Beek, Van de Beek, yeah. Partey, and who? Lo Celso. Lo Celso. Lo Celso. Because I really? think Partey, I think Partey is gonna work out at Arsenal. Oh no, 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 no. Donny Van de Beek. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, no, you're right. I was thinking of, I was thinking of not putting him in there just but, because it's... Oh, yeah. but, but, but I'll be honest with you. I do have a glimpse of hope with Donny too. But right. 
with no uh yeah 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 i go i think los celso isn't gonna be the next thing that with tottenham and i think donny can work out Partey right. can work out and yeah i think that yeah and i, and I think you're you're onto it right for my my rationalization i would have picked a tiago or a los celso because mm-hmm. because i feel like there's an air of donny van de beek not getting his chance mm-hmm. yet right so I, I was thinking more like underwhelming per minute played um and if donny van de beek hasn't really been playing mm-hmm. uh but party obviously he's he's shown some great things and then also people have been underwhelmed with him los celso might have had a few glimpses beginning of last year maybe middle of last year but man has he been kind of eh, this year Fuck. uh and, and tiago i know has been dealing with whether it was fitness issues or whatever but tiago ain't the tiago that we saw at Bayern. Uh, so yes i agree different player but Trust me, Breton. He'll he, he. I've seen him at a world class level there. I've, but who needs to be on that list is Paul Pogba, man. He's the guy. No, I know. Paul Pogba, man. Put him in the yeah. mud. No, <laughs> I know. I, I left him off. <laughs> so I left guys, him off. I hope you guys enjoyed episode forty. Please do not forget to leave a comment down below, like the video, and like our other videos in the YouTube channel, please, man. A like always yeah. helps. And yeah. The boldest community out there. Thank you for listening to this podcast, man. And yeah, any last thoughts, Bretton? No, just uh, visit <laughs> FC, FCWonderKid.com, our sponsors, right? Yes. Too. Yes, yes. Sponsored yeah. by FCWonderKid.com, guys. Love to see it, man. So here's FC Wonderkid episode 40. Thank you for listening, people. And have a nice weekend. See ya. <laughs>